What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, strengthsandsneakers.com. I'm going to attempt to answer a very difficult question posed to me, and that is, what is the true addictive potential of benzodiazepines? This is not an easy question to answer because there's not a lot of good data, and one of the things we as scientists, physicians rely on is data. Data to substantiate our claims and our thoughts, but I'm going to do my best to answer this question. So, to start it out, what do we know? We know that in all areas of medicine, you have to always balance the risks and benefits of prescribing a medication. Sometimes there's risk and there's long-term addictive potential associated with some of the medications that we prescribe. Whether you're a psychiatrist or you're a medical, you know, an internal medicine doctor, you may be prescribing addictive medications at one point or another in your career. In psychiatry, and in my mind, there's kind of three main classes of medication that I think have the most addictive potential, and they're the ones that get talked about all the time. And that would be the benzodiazepines, which we're discussing here. It would be the stimulant medications, things like methylphenidate and amphetamine. And then, of course, the opioid agonists like methadone and buprenorphine. So these would be the main ones that I could think of as potentially being addictive and physicians worrying about prescribing these medications. Now, of course, everything is on a case-by-case -case basis. And what I mean by that is you always have to take the individual patient into account to determine whether or not they're appropriate for treatment with a particular medication. And that's why it's your job to clinically assess these patients as objectively as possible to decide whether or not prescribing this medication is appropriate or inappropriate. So we want a good history. And one of the things we really look for, and this is going to come up later in the video why this is really important, is we look for to identify individuals who have had issues with substance use in the past. So if I find somebody who has a history of cocaine use disorder, heroin, or opioid use disorder, then I, I may be a little more reluctant to prescribe medications like benzodiazepines or stimulants because I know that this person is already potentially biologically, genetically prone to addiction. So I'm now prescribing something that may be more risky. So I want to take a good history, I want to know whether or not this person's had any issues with substance use in the past, and I also want to know if there's a family history of substance use, again that genetic component of this disorder, and we know a lot about the neurobiology of addiction, probably a lot more about the neurobiology of addiction than we do about the neurobiology of schizophrenia or depression for that matter. So I want to know about those things when I'm prescribing. Now, we know a couple of key important facts. One, benzodiazepines have risk of tolerance and withdrawal. If you've ever treated a patient or you've ever had benzodiazepine withdrawal yourself, then you know it can be life-threatening. Some of the symptoms that we see when somebody's withdrawing from these medications is we see things like anxiety. So again, it's paradoxical. It, it treats anxiety in certain cases, but it also can cause anxiety when you're withdrawing. Restlessness, insomnia, dizziness, nausea, headaches, and then specifically the most life-threatening effect is seizures. So it increases the risk of seizure when you're withdrawing from benzodiazepines. And that's the main medical issue that we concern ourselves with. And this is more likely to happen in medications that have a short half-life, hence medications like Alprazolam or Xanax. So if you haven't seen the other video, check out the introduction of benzodiazepines for more on half-life and, uh, and speed of onset. I think this brings us to the last point, which is we're trying to figure out what the true addictive potential of benzodiazepines is. There's tons of controversy. I'm going to start by saying that there's different things from everybody, right? You'll hear from experts on this, you'll hear from the drug companies that manufacture these benzodiazepine drugs, and you're going to get a whole slew of different ideas about what the true addictive potential is for these medications. And what we have to do is we have to kind of piece together all the pieces and try to see what we can what we can say definitively and what we have to kind of speculate about. So, controversy about the addictive potential of these drugs, and you'll have, like I said, multiple types of psychiatrists. You'll have ones that are completely anti-benzo. I know a few colleagues who basically choose not to prescribe benzodiazepines at all, and they run private practice clinics that basically say no benzodiazepines at all here, you have to go to another clinic to get them. And that makes your life a little bit easier, but again, I think that takes away an important tool. And I'll give this example. 
are, you know, we all probably, or most of us, are using a drug every day that has addictive potential. And that's caffeine. A lot of us are drinking coffee or energy drinks to help power us through our day, and that drug has addictive potential. But when we think about this drug or medication, caffeine, depending on how, how you want to call it, it's not as significant as cocaine. It's not as dangerous or as addictive as cocaine or methamphetamine. So there's a distinction there. There's a there's a there's a point, there's a there's kind of a point where like this, yes, it has addictive potential, but certainly not as dangerous. And you have to make that distinction. And we have to do the same thing a little bit with the benzodiazepines here. So what we know from randomized controlled trial data is that in people with multiple substance use disorders, benzodiazepines are the primary drug of abuse in about 32% of this population. So approximately one third of people who are using multiple drugs or abusing multiple drugs will primarily abuse benzodiazepines. Now, there is more risk for abuse of the medication in a population with a history of substance use disorder. And what we see from the randomized controlled trial data is that approximately 15% of those patients will eventually abuse a benzodiazepine prescription. And that's compared to 6% of controls who are not prescribed a benzodiazepine. So about 15%. And you should take note of that number because if you think about this, it's not a majority. It's a small minority in many cases, right? 15% is not 70 or 80% like you might think. So a majority of even people with a substance use history who are, who are prone to abusing these medications are not abusing them in a vast majority of cases. So it's important to note. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about people who don't have a history of substance use? Well, obviously, as you might have guessed, they have a lower risk for abuse than the non in the non-substance abusing group or population. And we really don't have any data to say exactly what that risk is. We can't really put a definitive number on it. But if we can take that sort of 15% of patients in the substance use category, you got to assume it's lower in the non-substance use, non-substance using population. So in the non-substance using population, you got to assume it's somewhere around half, maybe 7% to 5% of patients will eventually go on to become addicted to benzodiazepines if they are prescribed them. So it's not a definitive number. It's not based on randomized controlled trial data because we don't have any. So it's kind of um, it's, it's kind of an educated guess about how, how what percentage of patients with non-substance use history are going to develop an addiction to benzodiazepine. So I'm going to wrap the video here, and I'm going to say that my personal view is that I disagree with people who say that there's no addictive potential, so this might be some of the drug companies that try to mitigate some of their, you know, some of the, the bad press and bad publicity associated with these drugs, so I disagree with them. I think, yes, there is some addictive potential for sure, and you have to be mindful of how you prescribe this drug and who you prescribe this drug to. On the other hand, I also disagree with the people who say that, you know, we should never use benzodiazepines because there's risk of addiction. Yes, there's risk of addiction. Yes, it may be higher than other non-addictive drugs, say a regular SSRI medication for depression. It still is a minority of people. So if we say like 7% of people have an issue with addiction who are in the non-substance using category, then 93% of those people are not going to have an issue becoming addicted to benzodiazepines. So again, a vast majority are going to be perfectly fine using these drugs responsibly without becoming addicted. Obviously, the main things to look for is a history of substance use. And this doesn't necessarily mean you should prescribe this medication freely or you, know, you shouldn't take any caution, you shouldn't worry. You got to be specific, you got to make sure you're doing your due diligence in each case, but at the end of the day, I think it the addictive potential falls somewhere in the middle between the people who say there's no addictive potential and the people who say 
it's addictive, we should never prescribe it. So you should probably take a middle ground here, like most things in life. So I'm going to cut the video there. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We'll continue to try to answer your questions and cover the topics of interest here on the channel.